considering the day of Tuba'ab, which is the day of love, a minor Jewish holiday, as a consideration for a rapture day. Now, only God knows for sure. This is not a prediction. This is food for thought and hopeful speculation as we think about what would be in the mind and heart of God in regard to the timing of the rapture and the, his timing to choose a day for the rapture. My thought is that one of the big things on God's heart will be that it will be a day to impact the hearts of the Jewish people as to what just happened. And Tuba Av is a day of weddings, a day of love, and there's some interesting things that could connect Tuba Av to a reason that God would choose to rapture the bride on that day. And also, we have the Feast of Trumpets coming up, which would be October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, and that would be the seventh anniversary of the Great Revelation 12 sign. Uh, we are looking, I'm going to let share a few words from this uh, Jewish Orthodox lady sharing about Tuba Av as a minor Jewish holiday, what it means to her and to their family. This prohibition was lifted on Tuba Av. Event number three, after the story of the concubine of Giva, the children of Israel swore not to let their daughters marry anyone from the tribe of Benjamin. This prohibition was also lifted on Tuba Av. So the Benjamin was able to take a bride and snatch the bride on Tuba Av. And that's in Judges 21. And we're going to look at that a little bit more here. But uh, we're, I'm going to share a little bit more about, about that. No doubt, based on these two events that I just told you, number two and number three, over time, this day, Tuba Av, was a day described in the Gemara in the Talmud as a day devoted to betrothals so that new Jewish families could emerge. Event number four. After Yerovolm split off the ten the Gemara also relates to us that centuries ago, the daughters of Jerusalem would go dance in the vineyards on the 15th of Av, and that whoever did not have a wife would go there to find a bride. In modern days, this is now considered a very auspicious day to get married or become engaged. And it's considered a very festive day, so if your wedding is on Tuba Av, you do not need to fast, which fasting on your wedding day is an Ashkenazi custom. Okay, so you can... Continue uh, listening to that if you'd like. So Tuba Av this year in 2024 is on August 18th and 19th, beginning on August 18th in the east evening at sundown and going to August 19th. So we are considering this day. It is, uh, you know, what, six days after Tisha B'Av, six days after the day of mourning, the day when the Jews lost their temple, the day when they refused to go into the promised land. It's six days after that. Here it's on the 15th day of Av. And here's an interesting thing too. It is on a full moon. Always on a full moon. And we know that full moon is interesting and significant potentially um, as a meaningful day. Some people consider that the uh, rapture would happen on the day of a new moon or the day of a full moon. So from the scripture the good moon has gone on a long journey. He'll come back on the full moon. So uh, a Tubov ritual, the 15th of the month of Av is an ancient Jewish holiday when women would go out to the fields in borrowed white clothing and dance. Now that is extremely interesting from our perspective here as we are remembering the great marriage supper of the Lamb coming, that there will be a time when we will have those white robes. That's what we believe. Uh, the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself wet ready, and it was granted her to clothe herself with white linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And to the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then uh, said, Blessed are those 
who have made their robes white. They write in the blood of the Lamb. In Revelation 22, he said, Blessed are those who wash their robes. That is, we're going to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Is going to be our hope. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. So just to say this is a, a ritual when women would go out to the fields in borrowed white clothing. And the white clothing we're going to have is going to be borrowed, but it's going to be given by grace of the blood of Christ, cleansing our sin and the Holy Spirit empowering us to love God, to love God and love the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, later it it became known as a time of summer dancing and a courtyard celebration. So it's a celebration of love and the coming. Girls wearing white dance on Tuba Av in the Holy Land in the 1920s. On this day, which also marks the beginning of the grape harvest. So <clears throat> the beginning of the grape harvest. So it's... <clears throat> Tuba'av, love, marriage, and the Messiah. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so your God will rejoice over you, Isaiah 62, 5. So the question here, if the Lord Jesus comes for his bride on that day when the Jewish community is remembering marriage, the women dancing in white robes, as they're remembering that the God will rejoice over you as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride. If the Lord Jesus came and took the bride on that day, it would be a day that would impact the Jewish heart that Christ truly has come for the bride. Hallelujah. And when we see in Judges 21, <clears throat> 21 we see this, that the uh, tribe of Benjamin would take a wife. And in Jewish tradition, that day was to the to the So uh, so Benjamites would wait in the vineyards around Shiloh as the maidens came out to dance, for each to snatch his bride. Okay, so <clears throat> and here's a here's a uh, article, fifteenth of Av Rapture Day. Question, question, question. If the daughters of Shiloh came out to dance in the dances, then then come out of the vineyards and snatch each man his wife. To Be'av, the Jewish Valentine's Day. After the war, there were only 600 Benjamite men left, and there was a concern that the tribe would be wiped out. So the tribe of Benjamin was allowed to come snatch a bride that would go out and dance. And this is what happened after the incident. The tribes swore that they would not let any man from the tribe of Benjamin marry their daughter. So that's a story in J Judges 21. So, uh, each was to take a young lady while she is dancing and then carry her back to their territory in Benjamin as a wife. So, um, though that is interesting, and what does the uh, name Benjamin mean? Well, that is also interesting in our uh, theory here as a possibility. We're just looking at possibilities. I'm very aware that this date will probably come and go and will not be the rapture. Only God knows for sure we're looking at possibilities and reasons for expectation and hope only god knows for sure but we're in the season right now and it very well could come before this day it could come on the ninth of Av. it could come today we are on the brink so uh, while the young women were dancing each man caught one and carried her off to be his wife and that was in tradition done on to the off so this is what benjamin the benjamites did while the girls were dancing each man caught one and carried her off to be his wife. Then they returned to their inheritance and rebuilt the towns and settled them. Judges 21. So what does Benjamin mean? It means son of the right hand. Ben is son and Yamin is the right hand. And the true Benjamin, the true Benjamin, the true Benjamin of the father is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the son at the right hand of the father. And, uh, as Benjamin came and snatched his bride on the 15th of Av, on Tubioff, could it be that the true son of the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
on the right hand of the father, the Benjamin, could come and snatch his bride on that very day. That would also be a testimony to the Jewish people that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which they don't really understand at this point, many of them. He is the Son, the Son. Hallelujah. He is God in the flesh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is God the Son, who came in the flesh to this world to become a human being, to save us from our sins. Hallelujah. So this was an interesting uh, story here. So August 19th is the full moon. The U.S. Eastern Time is at 2.26 p.m., the full moon. So we are considering possibilities for a rapture day, and only God knows for sure. But even at this time, we would encourage you to seek the Lord and pray. Even as uh, the world is on the brink, and I believe it is a reasonable thing to say World War III has already started. Uh, there is escalation right now, even as I speak. Uh, there is escalation and possibility of severe escalation in the next day or two or today. So we need to pray. Father, we just want to come to you, Lord, in the holy, glorious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shed holy blood on the cross to cleanse our sin so that we could have those white robes, that we could know you in a personal way. And Father, we pray you bless right now <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit go forth through the world and those that don't know you will call them to come. That we as the church, the bride who've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb will cry out to sinners to come and be saved. Father, bless us to occupy until our Savior comes. And Lord, we do believe that our Savior is coming soon to snatch us into glory where we We'll have our spirits united with the Lord for eternity. We thank you, Father, that our Savior, Jesus Christ, shed holy blood to unite our spirits with you for eternity, to unite our spirits with the Lord, Jesus Christ, for eternity. And that we praise you, Lord, for this glorious privilege that we have. So we pray, Lord, use us this day, and we pray, Lord, bring peace to this world. And we know it will truly come when our Savior comes back again. And Lord, in this day, while the world is at the brink of escalation from World War III, we pray, Father. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those in harm's way, that they could get right with you today, Lord. And we pray, Father, for uh, those who are committed in their hearts to evil and to that which is following the devil. We pray, Father, that you will raise your mighty hand and restrain that evil rebuke that evil, and cause those hearts to repent. Cause those hearts to fear you and to repent. And Lord, we repent before you in sorrow. We come in regret and sorrow for the for the blasphemy uh, at the Olympics, Lord. We ask you to have mercy, Lord, on those in this world, Lord God. And use your people, protect your people. Put a shield of protection around all of your people and those who you have a purpose and plan for specifically, Lord. We pray you put a hedge of protection around them as they're hated by the world, Lord. And we ask you, Father, these things in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Come and go with me to the Father's house, to the Father's house, to the Father's house. Come and go with me to the Father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. Jesus made the way to the Father's house, to the Father's house, to the Father's house. Jesus made the way to the Father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. Hallelujah. Check this website. He died for you dot com number four and letter U. Share that with your friends and family to share the gospel. He died for you dot com number four and letter U. God bless you all.